It's a book, I think, about friends reunited. It's about two old friends from university who, after a gap of maybe 20 years, get together for a long weekend. It's the summer. It's the last weekend of August. Um, and they and their wives are sort of put together, marooned together almost, in a remote country farmhouse. Somewhere in England, on the east coast of England, it's unusually hot weather, it's quite claustrophobic, um, and there's a sort of rather tense atmosphere, despite a feeling of goodwill and bonhomie. I think you feel a creeping sense of unease. Well, I, I had a story roughly in my head, but I thought it was very important that this be told by one of the participants. It's his version of events. And I think when, when you've got a narrator like that, there's always a question not just about the narrative, the story he's telling, there's a question about him, the kind of person he is. And I wanted readers perhaps to, to start thinking about what kind of person Ian is and yeah, without you know giving too much away, um, to get curious about him, perhaps start to wonder about the kind of person he is, the kind of character he is. He's a school teacher. Um, you know, there's that idea of you know trust trust the tale, not the teller, and, and I think there's a bit of a question of trust involved in this story and how much we should trust Ian. Well, these two men, um, way back in university days, have, rather rashly, in a drunken moment, said, every so often we must get together again, and we've always enjoyed physical activities and little contests with each other. Let's recreate that when we've left university, and every so often we'll, we'll have a sort of rematch. So they've got a kind of bet going, really, as to who, who's number one between the two of them. And here they are, 20 years on, they re re Part of what's going on, apart from friends casually getting together, um, is that they've got this this bet going. They're going to compete in three different ways, and they 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 Ian tells you, you know, it's not a big deal. There's nothing riding on this. But gradually you realise actually these are men, and men tend to be very competitive, and actually quite a lot is riding on it. Yeah, there's a bit of a, a bombshell drops during the the first of their contests where Ollie, kind of excusing himself for not not performing very well, says, well, actually, you know, I've been diagnosed with something pretty serious. Um, but a bit of a question arises as to how much he is perhaps panicking and how much he's exaggerating what's wrong with him. It's a question in Ian's mind, and, and when Ian talks to Ollie's wife, she says, well, you know what he's like. Ollie's, Ollie's always been a a worrier and a panicker, you know, don't take it too seriously. But then Ian thinks, well, hang on, maybe she's just protecting me as an old friend from the worst. And so, as often happens, I think, when when we know that a friend might be ill, we're never quite quite sure how seriously to take it and what's required of us. And I think Ian is put in that position of uncertainty. I think I think one of the main themes of the last weekend is undoubtedly male rivalry. Um, I would say I'm not myself particularly competitive, but uh, <laughs> maybe I am secretly, and lots of men I know secretly are hugely competitive even if they pretend not to be. And that, that's, that, I was interested in that, this, that we feel etiquette requires us to play down um, how, how competitive we feel, but it is a very highly competitive society and, and it's almost required of us to be so. So I was interested in that theme. Um, there's, I think global warming is in there a bit too. I mean, the, 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 the main, main characters have a long discussion about it at one point, and it's a hot, it, it's a hot, uh, uh, unusual sort of climate that, that they're in, that this uh, the bank holiday weekend. Um, I have some sympathy for Ian. I think I was very keen that the reader feels some sympathy at the beginning. You know, he's the little guy. He's he's envious of Ollie, who's more successful. You know, he's the barrister. Ian's a school teacher. Socially, you know, one's far more successful than the other. Perhaps sexually, maritally as well. Uh, in all sorts of ways, um, Ian's quite envious of his friend Ollie. Um, and I think at the beginning you kind of feel on his side, you know, the, we always take the part of the little man, I think, against, is it in his battles against big men and against society. Um, but, you know, the more you read on, I think the more 
you wonder about Ian's version of events. Is he such a loser as he makes out? Um, is his seeming friendship with Ollie, to whom he declares, you know, liking and even love, um, as simple as that? Is, is there not something quite bitter and poisonous mixed into that? Um, so gradually, you know, little, it's like taking, you know, the skin off an onion, and more and more is unpeeled as the story develops.